Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Victor. I work here at CERN. I've been working here for uh, two years now, a bit more. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, juice. Uh, the pronunciation is, well, actually juice. It sounds like guis, but it's juice. And it's a theoretically lightweight dependency injection framework for Java that I decided to try. And I wanted to talk about my adventure with it. But first, we can have a look at something that probably we are more familiar with, which is Spring. Why do we like Spring? For starters, you can do a lot of things with Spring. You can do anything that you want. You have, obviously, the dependency injection, aspect-oriented programming, web security, well, web, uh, liquid-based integration, integration with almost all types of databases, Spring comes with pretty much everything. Um, same goes with uh, Quarkus and Micronaut. Then, also, Spring comes with a very mature community that comes from Spring existing for uh, too many years I can't even remember. And the ecosystem is very well developed and documented. Uh, you can also have uh, Spring Boot. And the start.spring.io website is uh, one of the best tools I have ever tried. Uh, you just go there, click some buttons, you get a jar or a war, and you have pretty much everything that you want. And the solutions that you, ca that you get from uh, Spring Boot, for instance, are pretty much production ready. So Spring has too many good things. So. Why did I go with Juice? Well, first, I noticed that it was created by Google. So that caught me kind of off guard. I did not expect it to be created by Google. But I, after doing some research, I found it. And it was kind of uh, surprising. Then I saw that it promised it to be lightweight, just uh, a couple of things which was interesting because Spring has very nice things, but it also has too many configurations sometimes, too many files, too many classes, too many services. So sometimes it's a bit complex to get into it. Then I also wanted to experiment with a new framework because I have been using Spring mostly. I touched a bit of Quarkus, but I wanted to try something that was a bit less known. And I also wanted to learn. So for the sake of science, I decided to give it a try. Then, just to show a very, very, very small example of what you may encounter when doing a bit of uh, juice, is pretty similar to what you would find in a Spring service. You have a service, you inject into the constructor in this case, a repository, just uh, simple stuff. And the promise is kind of there. You don't have to do too many annotations. You just put the inject in the constructor, and you have, uh, you have everything. So as of now, things are looking good. However, the first hiccup, uh, some of you that may have used uh, Spring a special Spring Boot, may notice that the main uh, method in your, uh, in your application is generally just a one-liner, where you just uh, instantiate the Spring application. However, uh, here you do need to create your own Tomcat, Tomcat instance. It takes a lot of configuration. There are no defaults that are actually useful. And you have to write a decent amount of code. I would say, if I remember correctly, that it took about 50 lines of pure Tomcat configuration to get something uh, actually working, which was quite disappointing because I would expect it to have something gone with it. So 
Then we got the second hiccup. Where do the, co the docs? There are no docs. Or to be more precise, the documentation that you would find in GitHub in the juice repository is non-existent. There is something there, but if you try what was there, it won't work. So you are safer just assuming that whatever was put there worked at some point, they never updated it, and it no longer was functional. So what did I do to try to learn this? I scanned through the repositories in GitHub that had this, uh, this framework and tried to do a mix of the examples to create just a very basic Hello World uh, application that you would go to a landing page and you would get Hello World, as simple as that. Then, the third issue. I had to also use Jakarta to have some annotations, to have some web, uh, web endpoints, uh, well, pretty basic uh, APIs. And the issue was that the inject annotation of Jakarta and the inject annotation that comes with juice, although you may think that they are interchangeable, and per the JSR they should, they are actually not. So if you try to use one, the project will collapse and the endpoints will not get scanned. So what should feel like things that are very similar, like a Clementine and a Tangerine, they are actually different. If you look at the pictures, mm, you may try to guess which one is the Clementine, which one is the Tangerine. I will spoil that the left one is the tangerine, and the right one is the clementine. Uh, but it was disappointing to see that they are not following the recommendations from Java. Then, the fourth issue. Uh, to get things going and to connect juice properly with Tomcat and to expose properly the URLs, I had to also add uh, Jersey. Jersey connects uh, to Tomcat with the resource config and the server container. Then Tomcat is joined with Juice with the application and the server configs. And then I had to create a custom adapter uh, between Juice and Jersey, which was the HK2 to Juice module. I decided to name it like that because HK2 is kind of a part of Jersey that allowed me to connect to Juice. Where was this documented? Obviously nowhere. Uh, so I had to keep trying multiple things, looking at different examples of people using this stuff. Some of them worked partially, others also worked partially. So in the end, something worked out that was a combination of everything. Then, the fifth hiccup. I wanted to have something a bit more f fancy, let's say, and I wanted to have a swagger. It was the most basic swagger ever because it would be just a single endpoint where you would just get a hello world, but I wanted to have something as basic as possible but functional. Obviously, Spring Doc, Spring Doc is not there because Spring Doc comes from Spring, no surprise. But you could not get an Open API being either, which is sad because Open API could be taken as a uh, library that is not related to Spring Doc, which is sad. So I had to resort to generating the HTML of Swagger programmatically which would, uh, would add uh, some default endpoints that I did not want either, and I had to programmatically also clean those default endpoints and just add uh, mine, which was uh, very disappointing, to say, to say the least. Then, the sixth problem. This one was about logging. Of course, 
this is still a hello world application, but I wanted to have at least a log saying that you are calling a, an endpoint. So I went with a list of the most known libraries for logging. I went with log4j12. It did not work. I tried to go with log4j2. Neither. I went with reload4j. It also didn't work until I decided to go with SLF4j simple, which is pretty much just a wrapper for a system.out.print. And obviously, there were no colors. It was just plain old text. I think I would have rather just using system.out.print for my logs, because it was just a waste of a, of a library. Then, the seventh, I wanted to have, have some tests. It may be done, because there's, it's still a Hello World application. But I wanted to have a dummy test to test that the controller calls the service properly, the service calls the repository, and kind of an integration test slash web test. So I went, obviously, with the most popular framework, JUnit. JUnit does not work out of the box with, uh, with Juice and uh, Jersey, which is extremely disappointing. I would have expected it to have some kind of uh, good news in that part. But after some uh, research and looking at some examples, because obviously the not working out of the box was not documented either, I managed to get JUnit to work, which is surprising. Then I also had to write some custom extensions to have unit tests and integration tests working, because uh, in contrast to Spring, the way to inject beans, or well, let's call them beans in the juice sense, to, to the tests have, has to be done manually in a special class, which is a bit cumbersome. Uh, maybe it's just uh, my opinion, but Spring does it uh, way nicely and at least lets you scan packages. And then the Jersey web testing docs did not exist. Uh, so again, bad on the Jersey side. They did not have any examples, proper examples, of doing a web test. So I had to look for some examples of repositories that use this. Some of them worked, some of them partially worked, until I forced them to actually work. But in the end, I managed to get something working, and all the tests were passing. Although I would be sad if they didn't, because they were very simple. So that was the adventure. What did we learn? Do not work with a framework with uh, that had a release two years ago. They have 19 releases, and they have existed for a decent amount of years. So clearly, they do not care about the, about the project. In the bottom, I have shown some uh, other examples of actual frameworks like Spring, Micronaut, and Quarkus. They have releases uh, at least a month ago, so good on their side. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs> you have any questions? Yes? So it was just a personal project. I had some spare time, and I decided to try a new framework because I also wanted to try, uh, was it Quarkus? But Quarkus does not work properly with, uh, uh, Mac M uh, with ARM uh, architecture. So I got a bit sad and decided out of pettiness to, to try a different one. <laughs>